Hi, welcome to another video. We will talk about the moving average extension from the Bitcoin price. So what we're going to look at is how much does the price extend from the moving average? And we will look at the six month moving average, the one year, the two year, and last but not least, the four year moving average. The reason why we do this is we try to find out where are we currently on a macro scale, on a macro trend in Bitcoin. Are we currently way overextended? So did we rise too quickly or do we still have room to grow? So if you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to give this video a like so the channel can grow within YouTube. Thank you. So what we can see over here is the six month moving average of Bitcoin. So in green, we see the Bitcoin price. In red, we see the moving average. And here in white, we see how much did the price get in relative terms above the moving average. So what you see here in blue is the zero line. So that's basically whenever the price has crossed the moving average. So let's look, for example, here in uh, June of 2015, we have a cross over here. And when we say we zoom in a little bit, we can see at those points where this white line crosses the blue line, we also see a cross here of the price with the moving average. And so the reason why this is interesting is because we can see in those market cycle tops, so if we had a top here in March 2013 and uh, one over here in November 2013. We see that during those tops, the price gets quite far away from the moving average. So in this case, it was around a 4.5x. So the price was 4.5 times higher than the moving average. And in this case, here it was a 3.9x. And what we can see is that over time with decreasing volatility, those market cycle tops, they tend to also be less extended from the moving average. So this big crash that happened here in the end of 2017, we only saw an extension from the moving average, from the six month moving average of around 2.4. So over time we see the bull runs get slower, relatively speaking, and they peak out quicker. Now, how valid is this line here? Are we going to get another pump up here? It's pretty hard to say, right? Currently, the moving average is at uh, pretty much the price. So we're looking at around 23,000. And so if we would extend again to a similar level, say we would go back up to say 1.3, we would be at around 100,000. This moving average extension is also interesting to find potential troughs. So where are we oversold? Where is it really safe to buy? So if we just look at what's the lowest value we can observe over here, we, we are at around 0 0.5 of the moving average. So we got a support over here. So the lowest we could expect the price to fall where we would have a really good buying opportunity would basically be at approximately 22,000. Now, does that mean that Bitcoin has to fall to 22,000? No, but if it does, it's a pretty good buying opportunity. Note that the moving average currently is increasing. So when the time comes and the price does fall further, we just need to look at this moving average again and reevaluate. Now here we've got the six month moving average, but what about the one year and the two year and the four year? This is the one year moving average extension. So just compare, here is the six month, here's the one year, six month, one year. We can draw again a similar line over here. So just connecting those tops somewhat. And again, if we are looking for support, we look at something around 60% of the moving average. So currently we are around 50% above the moving average. So let's assume the moving average creeps up further while the price goes down. So let's say the moving average is at around 33,000. And then we are looking at the bottom. We would look also at a price of around 20,000 where we would have an absolute buying price where we probably see the bottom of a potential crash that might happen or might not happen. Now here we've got the two year moving average extension. The line here is even a bit clearer. We see quite clearly how those peaks of the moving average extension align. And again, we're in the middle of this range. So just when I see this line, it's pretty scary, I think, because we do see whenever the price hit this line, it fell all the way down without stopping to this moving average. We've got the same over here. It falls all the way down to the moving average and the same goes here. So that would tell me there is room to fall even further. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if we are going to meet this two year moving average sooner or later.
we would basically just be repeating the same pattern up down to the moving average stay below the moving average for a while again an extension and again down to the moving average so there's not really the case where we go up and then just midway through and then up again whenever we got these big extensions we are that heated that we go all the way down to the moving average again and so that tells me if history is any indication that the price might come down to this red line to this moving average now last but not least this is the four year moving average four years is interesting because bitcoin halves every four years the new supply of bitcoin gets cut in half every four years we also tend to see the price cycles of bitcoin following four year patterns and so i do think it makes sense to look at this to look at the four year moving average and also to look at the extension from the four year moving average now what we can see just by looking at this chart already that this four year moving average was a really good support line in the past it basically never fell below the four year moving average so if i would have to guesstimate what's really the very worst case scenario it's basically when the price falls all the way down to this moving average will this happen i don't know i am not sure if this extension is any good because we don't track all those price cycles here before we just average out so much data that we can only match this peak over here with this peak over here in the shorter term moving averages we can actually see way more data points and so it does seem to make more sense to make a prediction based on these shorter term time frames but when it comes to what's the maximum we could possibly fall i think the four-year moving average is probably a very good tool I think a lot of people are going to buy if the price really reaches that low of a level. So how far could we potentially fall? Well, if we were to fall tomorrow, 70%, but, but this moving average increases over time. So if we just look at this extension over here, when in the end we really fell, we saw an 80% drop. And so if we now look at the peak over here, and we look at an 80% drop, this would be an instant crash, which I think is unlikely to happen. What's probably more likely is that we see this moving average continue to go up and we might trickle down over time. And so what's more likely is that we might see a drop somewhere around 60, 50%, depending on how long it takes. So just be prepared, this might happen. If you can't digest now a 50% drop from here, you're probably overexposed and you're on quote unquote scared money. So rather take some chips off the table and buy back in in case it really falls. If you enjoyed this video, please give this a like so YouTube shows this video to a new audience. And if you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to subscribe as well. We've also got a Telegram channel that you can join. It's still very small. I try to answer every question there as well. See you next time. Bye bye.